Hello everyone, my name is Stanley, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to solve a Rubik's Cube for beginners, part one. So solving a Rubik's Cube might sound a little bit difficult to do, but I'm going to try my best to try and teach you guys how to solve a Rubik's Cube by the end of the series. So before you begin, there's a few important things that you have to know before you solve a Rubik's Cube. So the first thing is that you have to know what the types of pieces are part of a Rubik's Cube. The first piece is called a corner piece, and it's located every basically corner of the cube. The second is the edge piece, which is always located between two corners. And they're always in the sides over here. And finally, the last one is the center piece, which according to its name is in the center. And there's gonna be six center pieces total. The next thing that's really important is that we have to know the color scheme of the Rubik's Cube. Although it is not very necessary to memorize where each of the colors are for a Rubik's Cube, it is still important to know which two colors are opposite each other in the Rubik's Cube. You should know that orange is always opposite from red, blue is always opposite from green, and white is always opposite from yellow. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, we can start to learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube. The method that I'm going to be teaching here is called the beginner's method. Usually, when you solve a Rubik's Cube, you usually solve layer by layer by layer until you finally complete it. For the beginner's method, one of its first parts is to complete the first layer of the Rubik's Cube. So that's what I'm going to be trying to teach you today. So let's scramble this Rubik's Cube. Okay, now that it's scrambled, we can start. So the first step in order to complete the bottom layer is we have to complete the cross. For me, I usually like to start with the white cross, meaning white will be the bottom of the solved Rubik's Cube. So what I'm going to have to do is that I'm going to have to find all the edge pieces with white in them, and I'm going to have to put them in the correct spots uh, to complete the white cross. By the correct spot, I mean that not only does the top part of the edge piece that belongs in here to complete the white cross be white up here on the top, the color that accompanies it on the edge piece must also match the center piece for the centers on this second layer here. So if the blue center is here and we want to make the white cross here, the edge piece here must be white and then blue here. So let's start. So looking around the cube, I immediately see this edge piece, white and green, and I know I have to put it up here. So since the white piece is all the way in the bottom here, what we can do is just rotate this side all the way up so that the white piece is on top. Now we can see that the green is already matching the center piece, so don't, I don't really have to do anything here. So looking around again, I can see another edge piece, red and white. I know I have to bring this up in order to form the cross. So for my previous edge piece, I know that the center is going to be green here. And I can see that the red center is going to be here. So I know that this edge piece over here is going to belong up here. So how am I going to bring this edge piece to this top part over here? Well, first we can rotate this edge piece so that it can match the center over here. And we can try what we did before. We can just flip it two times. But as you can see, this is flipped. And it's not completing the white cross like it did before. So what we can do is bring this to the second layer so that now the edge piece is on the second layer here. Then, because we want this white piece to be on top on, over on this position, we can rotate the top so that it can match this part and Brace basic and basically bring this up so that the positions of green and red will be conserved here. And we can just move this back so that it aligns with the centers here. So let's continue. We can clearly see this piece here is um, can be moved up to the cross. And this one is an edge piece with white and blue. Um, and we know that the green is opposite from the blue. So the blue center is here, meaning this edge piece must go up here. 
So in order to get it up here, we can't just move this face up like this because this would not be over here. So what we have to do is we can move the top face counterclockwise and then move it up. And then we can move that top face back so that now this is all conserved. The blue and white edge piece can now match the center and the rest of them are also matched up. Now we have one more to go and I can clearly see it's on the bottom here. So what we can do is that we can move it so that it matches the center over here, the orange center over here. And since the white is already on the bottom here, we can just rotate it twice. And now it will be completing the white cross with the assigned center. So now we have completed the white cross and matched each edge piece with the center. And that is our first step in the beginner's method. So now what we can do is that we can flip this Rubik's cube around so that the yellow center is on top and that white cross that we just created is on the bottom. Now, in order to complete the first layer, we, has, we still have to complete the corner pieces with the whites over here and the corners matching up with the centers accordingly. So let's find a corner piece. So immediately I can see this one with orange, even though it doesn't really look orange, this is orange, um, blue and white. So here's the orange center and here's the blue center. So let's move this corner piece that we found to there. So now we have this corner piece that should go here in order to work to solving the first layer. So one of the most important algorithms that you should know in order to put pieces like these into the bottom here is as follows. It might be really useful to memorize this and it shouldn't be too hard since it's only four moves. You move this right face up. You move the top face clockwise. You move this face back down and then you move the top face counterclockwise. So now I can see this corner piece is now on the bottom, but it is not oriented correctly since the white is on the right over here and not on the bottom here. So we can just repeat this algorithm until it does flip correctly. So let's move this right face up. Let's move this clockwise down and then counterclockwise. Now it is rotated so that we can try that algorithm again and put it in. So let's do it again. Let's do the right face up, the top face clockwise, the right face back down, and then counterclockwise. Now you can see this is oriented correctly with the orange part on the orange side and the blue part on the blue side and the white is now on the white side. So this corner is now complete and we can just repeat this step for all the other corners in order to put it in. For example, okay, so, so we can see this piece, white, blue, and red. And we know that it's going to have to go here since it's going to go between the blue, red, and the white centers. So let's just move it so that it's over here. And this piece is going to have to go down here. So let's do that algorithm again. Up, clockwise, down, and counterclockwise. And we can see we got lucky here it immediately oriented in the correct position. And let's continue. We can see another piece right here, green, orange, and white. So let's move it to where it should be put in. And let's just do the algorithm again. Up, clockwise, down, counterclockwise. And again, we got lucky and this got put in in the first try. Lastly, we can see this one, red, green, and white. So let's put it in the last empty spot and use the algorithm one more time. Up, clockwise, down, counterclockwise. And luckily, this was put into position oriented correctly. But sometimes it's not going to take that little steps in order to put it in. For example, if the piece looked like this, then it would take multiple repetitions of that algorithm in order to put it in. Let me show you. Up, 
clockwise, down, counterclockwise. Oh no, this is not oriented correctly, so let's do it again. Up, clockwise, down, counterclockwise. Okay, now it's back up to the top, so let's do it one more time. Up, clockwise, down, counterclockwise, and again, it's not oriented incorrectly. So let's do it again. Up, clockwise, down, counterclockwise. Okay, now it's back up here, and let's do it one last time. Up, clockwise, down, counterclockwise, and it was finally put in. So it can take up to that many repetitions of that algorithm in order to put it in. So all the previous ones that I was put in on my first try, that was pretty lucky. So now we have just completed all of the first layer with each edge piece corresponding to the center pieces. And this is the first step to the beginner's method. And we're going to be covering the next layer, the second layer here in the next video. So for now, I'm going to end the video here where you know how to solve the first layer of a Rubik's Cube. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you check out any of our other videos made by us. I hope you all have a good day, and I'm signing off now. Bye-bye.